Hey, this is Mr. Aiden. We're in section 5.2, verifying trigonomic identities. And I told you before is this is about when my cell phone starts going off at pre-calculus classes where students in other schools are asking me for tutoring. And why? Because they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> and the teachers aren't quite teaching them how to do these verifying trig identities. And the amazing thing is, is in just a little bit of about an hour of working with these students, they find out that it's not that hard. Okay, and what they're doing is that you have to see is this is a big puzzle. It's a big game and you can't be afraid of failing. Okay, you can't be afraid of getting to the end and going, yeah, I just kind of didn't do well. Okay, let me start again and let me see. It's just like doing a big puzzle. And so I'm going to show you some of my, my, my ways to do these big puzzles and, and show you it's not really all that hard. And so here are my rules. Uh, and, 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 not rules. They're more what you call guidelines of verifying trig identities. So my first guideline is this, is work with only one side of the equation at a time. It's often better to work with the more complicated side first, okay? Because it's easier to take something complicated and make it easier than easier and make it complicated. It's much, much easier to take that complicated side and just start to make it make it easier. Okay, I'm going to show you a bunch of things for you to do. Uh, look, look to factor things. Look to add fractions by getting common denominators. Look to square binomials. Look to create mon uh, monomial denominators. You're going to try to do a bunch of different things, and you'll see some of my techniques that I like to use in this video. Okay, you also want to look for opportunities to use your fundamental identities. Your sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. Your uh, it, because what are you doing is you're simplifying things. Sines and cosines pair up together, secants and tangents, cosecants and cotangents, these things pair up together, and oftentimes this is what you're looking for. If nothing else works, just try to change everything in the sines and cosines, and oftentimes it'll make it even simpler. The big thing is try something, okay? Don't be afraid to just go. Rip it and Rip it. I don't uh, Grip it and rip it. That's right. Grip it and rip it, boy. And just go at it. Try something. Don't be afraid to fail because you, you might get to the end. Uh, don't, don't do these for more than five minutes, okay? If you get to where you're like, you just don't know what to do, skip it and go on to the next one and come back. A lot of times uh, you'll clear your mind and you'll be able to do something. Just do something. Okay, and so we're going to be using all of our, our reciprocal identities, our quotient identities, our Pythagorean identities, maybe cofunction identities, odd even identities. We're going to be using these guys to make things easier. So I'm going to show you a bunch of different ways to do these, a bunch of different things that I can see and, uh, and that might help you out in doing these verifying trig identities. So you can see they're going to give you the answer. Your answer is sine square root of theta. That's the easiest side. So we're not going to start with that side. We're going to start with the left side because the left side is way more more complex. Okay. So you can see here we have secant squared of theta minus 1 over secant squared of theta. Now take a look. If you look over here, you can see secant squared of theta minus 1 equals tangent squared of theta. We're going to use this Pythagorean identity. So secant squared of theta minus 1 equals tangent squared of theta. And we still have the denominator of secant squared of theta, don't we? So you can see this this top, this numerator, he changed into tangent squared of theta. And so now you're like, what do I do now? I it I doesn't it seems to be pretty difficult. Well, what do we know about tangent? Tangent equals sine over cosine. So tangent squared would be sine squared over cosine squared. I kind of change that tangent into just sines and cosines. I'm going to do the same thing with the secant squared. So, so we have secant squared. What do we know secant squared is? It's 1 over cosine. So secant squared is on your den denominator, 1 over cosine squared of theta. Oh, well, that really helped out, didn't it? Because do you see how the cosine squared of thetas cancel out and you're left with sine squared of theta QED, quotal rot demonstrandum, you demonstrated it, you proved it, you proved it. And oftentimes these just take one or two steps in order to prove it and we use some different things. First thing we did was we use our Pythagorean identities, then we use our reciprocal identities in order to prove this function. Okay. 
Let's take a look at combining fractions before, um, before using identities. So we have fractions here. The left side is way more complex than the right side. The right side is just one trigonometric function. The left side is way more complex. So we have 1 minus sine of alpha. So what do we want to do? 1 plus sine of alpha over 1 plus sine of alpha. I want to get common denominators. I have over here 1 plus sine of alpha, which means I'm going to multiply by 1 minus sine of alpha, 1 minus sine of alpha. And so what was my common denominator now? My common denominator was 1 plus sine of alpha times 1 minus sine of alpha. That was on both of my denominators. Over on the left side, I had 1 plus sine of alpha plus, on the right side over here, 1 minus sine of alpha. So I have 1 plus sine of alpha plus 1 minus sine of alpha. Well, let me ask you, what's sine of alpha minus sine of alpha? That's 0. They cancel each other out, which means I'm left with 2 on my numerator. And what do I want to do right here? I have this 1 plus sine of alpha, 1 minus sine of alpha. Let's try to foil this guy. 1 times 1 is 1 plus and minus cancels out sine of alpha times minus sine of alpha, that's minus sine squared of alpha. What do you know one minus sine squared of alpha is? Well, that's cosine squared of alpha, that's my main Pythagorean identity. So I have two over cosine squared of alpha. And what do we know if cosine's on the denominator, that's the same as secant, isn't it? So we're left with two secant squared of alpha which is what I wanted to get. QED, quadrat demonstrandum. I demonstrated, I proved this identity right here. It's example two. Let's go to example three. We have tangent squared of x plus one, cosine squared of x minus one equals negative tangent squared of x. This is looking a little bit more complicated here, isn't it? Definitely the left side is way, way, way more complicated. And so I wanna take a look. What's tangent squared of x minus 1? Well, let's go to my Pythagorean identities. Tangent squared of x, tangent squared of x plus 1 is secant squared. So this is going to be the same thing as secant squared of x. Cosine squared of x minus 1. Let's go to my Pythagorean identities. Cosine squared of x minus 1 equals negative sine squared, isn't it? So this guy is equal to negative sine squared of x. Okay, so I'm, I'm doing a lot better here. Okay, now what do you know secant squared of x is the same thing as? Is 1 over cosine squared of x, isn't it? Using that reciprocal identity. Right here, I have negative sine squared of x which means what am I left with is negative sine squared of x on the numerator, cosine squared of x on the denominator. What's sine over cosine? The same thing as it's tangent squared of x. And that is my function that I wanted to prove, QED. I did it. I proved it. So again, what did we use here? We use a lot of the Pythagorean identities. Okay, We use the Pythagorean identities. We use the reciprocal identity right here. And then we we're able to simplify right there, okay? Now, here's here's one that's where we're trying to convert sines into cosines. You can see here, and this is a tough one. Which is the most complicated side, your left side or your right side? Well, it's <laughs> sometimes you will try something out here, and it won't work, okay? You'll, you'll maybe try out the right side here, and you'll go, <laughs> that was actually the most simple side. I'm gonna try the left side here, okay? And you can see, I. I don't like having these as all kinds of different things. And so what do I want to do? I want to change this tangent of x into sine of x over cosine of x. Plus, what's cotangent of x? Cosine of x over sine of x. What do I have now? I, I want to get some common denominators, don't I? Okay, Because anytime I have this denominator being different, try to get common denominators. It's, it sometimes helps out. So I'm going to multiply by sine of x on the numerator and the denominator over here cosine of x on the numerator and the denominator over here, which makes my common denominator sine of x times cosine of x, isn't it? Now, what do we have over here on the left side? We have sine squared of x. What do we have on the right side? 
cosine squared of x. Boy, that's helpful, isn't it? Because what's sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x equal to? It's equal to 1, is it? 1 over sine of x times cosine of x. And just think about what's sine of x on the denominator? That's cosecant of x, isn't it? Cosine on the denominator? That's secant of x. That is what I wanted to try to prove right there. That was my verify my trig identity, QED. I did it, yo. I did it. And so it's as easy as A, B, C, as easy as one, two, three, as simple as do, re, mi, A, B, C, one, two, three, baby, you and me, girl. And so that is as as easy as that. Let's go to example five, verifying a trig identity. Now, let me ask you, which is the most complicated side, your left side or your right side? <laughs> That's that's sometimes difficult. I actually think the right side's a little bit more difficult. Okay, a little bit more complicated. I have a common I have a denominator here. I know what I can do with this denominator. I have cosine of x over one minus sine of x. What do I do when I have this one minus sine of x? I want to multiply by the conjugate. We've been doing this all year. Uh, you see this kind of conjugate right here, this ability to multiply by conjugate do it. When you multiply by the conjugate, let, let me give you a little bit of word of advice. Don't distribute that numerator, okay? So, or don't distribute your, uh, yeah, don't distribute your numerator here. Something may cancel out later. But what do we want to do? We want to foil this denominator. It's the whole reason why we're multiplying by the, the conjugate. So 1 times 1 is 1. Negative sign, positive sign, that ends up giving me negative sine squared of x. Now let me ask you guys, what's 1 minus sine squared of x equal to? That's your Pythagorean identity, is cosine squared of x. So on my numerator, I have cosine of x times 1 plus sine of x, don't I? And on my denominator, I have cosine squared of x, cosine squared of x. Now, you can see, the uh, I can cancel at least one cosine out, right? So one of these cosines cancels out with one of those. So I'm left with 1 plus sine of x over cosine of x, which means I can kind of undistribute this common denominator. I have 1 over cosine of x plus sine of x over cosine of x. What's 1 over cosine of x the same thing as is secant of x. What's sine over cosine the same thing as? That's tangent of x, and guess what I got? I got right there what I wanted to try to get, verify. Okay, And so I took this right side in this case because it was most complicated and I was able to multiply by the conjugate. I was able to use my Pythagorean identities. I was able to cancel some things out and voila, I, I did it. Okay, Let's take a look at this one. Uh, this one is, again, you might go, whoo, Aiden, all of them look hard. All of them look hard, the left side and the right side. I actually think the left side looks a little bit uh, easier to work with from the beginning, Okay, a little bit harder overall. And I can see, do you see this cotangent squared of theta, cotangent squared of theta? If you look at your Pythagorean identities, if you look at your Pythagorean identities, your cotangent squared of theta, cotangent squared of, of theta is equal to your cosecant squared of theta minus 1 because cotangent squared of theta plus 1 equals co cosecant squared of theta. So that means I can do kind of a substitute cosecant squared of theta minus 1 over 1 plus cosecant, sorry about that, cosecant of theta. Okay, so all I did was substitute my Pythagorean identity for the numerator right there. Now look at your denominator. Your denominator is primed and ready to do a multiplying by the uh, conjugate right there, multiplying by the conjugate. And so, or you can try to factor the numerator out. You can try to factor the numerator out. Let's try to factor the numerator. Uh, we'll try something new here. So think about your numerator. If your numerator was x squared minus 1, can I factor that out to be x and x and plus 1 and minus 1? Yeah, that, that works. Which means I'm going to factor that numerator to be cosecant of theta plus 1, cosecant of theta minus 1 over the denominator of cosecant theta plus 1. Oh boy, that helps, doesn't it? 
P cancels out with him, which means I am left with cosecant theta minus 1. Cosecant theta minus 1. And you can see, oh wait, that didn't give me the right side, did it? It didn't give it to me. It, it made it a whole heck of a lot simpler. It made it a whole heck of a lot simpler. Now, let's see if I can do something with this cosecant theta minus 1. I'm not going to give up. I, Aiden doesn't give up. So what's cosecant of theta? That's 1 over sine of theta, isn't it? Minus 1. What can I get? Let's get some common denominators. So 1 over sine of theta. What can I multiply on the top and bottom is I'm going to multiply by sine of theta over sine of theta. And so we have minus sine of theta over sine of theta. All my numerator, I have one minus sine of theta. All my denominator, I have a common denominator of sine of theta. Guess what I got? I got exactly my answer. Okay, so I proved it. It took a little bit of hard work. I, I had to kind of work through it a little bit. Uh, so you might have got to this point right here and given up. Okay, and sometimes you get to a point and you, you, you can't go any further. Okay? You might then try to take this next, this right side, and try to be, become cosecant of theta minus 1, and that is proving it as well. So that is 5.2, section 5.2, verifying trig identities. Um, it's just a big game. It's just a big puzzle. It's just trying to manipulate things, using your identities, using what you know how to do, factoring, uh, changing the sines and cosines, getting common denominators, multiplying by conjugates, all those different things in order to prove these trig identities. Thanks, guys. Hope this helped. Catch you on the flip side.